Hello and welcome back to the Master Civil Engineering. In the previous video, we learned that how to find the settlement of a foundation using the data from the plate load test. And in this video, we will learn that how to find the allowable load of a foundation or footing using the data from the plate load test. I have been given a question which states that the following data was obtained from a plate load test carried out on a 60 cm square test plate at a depth of 2 m below ground surface on a sandy soil which extends up to a large depth. Determine the allowable load on a 2 m cross 2 m column footing with a base at a depth of 2 m. The permissible settlement for the foundation is 22 mm and minimum factor of safety of 3 is required against shear failure. And the unit weight of the soil determined at the base of the test pit by the core cutter method was 19.61 kN per meter cube. So you can see the data. We have a load intensity in kilo Pascal, okay, and the corresponding settlement for each load intensity. So we have to find the allowable load uh, for the footing, which has a size of 2 meter cross 2 meter, okay. So we will find the allowable load using the two methods. The first will be the shear failure criterion and second one will be the settlement criterion. And we will take the lower uh, lowest value as the allowable load. The first thing which you will do is you will draw the load and settlement curve in Excel. If you want to learn how to draw this curve in Excel, that is the load and settlement curve. You can watch my previous video in which I have shown in step by step manner that how to draw this uh, curve. Okay, that is the load settlement curve in Excel. I will be posting the link to this video in the description or you can click at the top right corner of this video uh, to go to this video to watch how to draw this load settlement curve in Excel. So after you draw this load settlement curve in Excel, you can see that this curve does not have a peak load okay this curve uh, in this curve the peak is not well defined so for the load settlement curve which does not have a well defined peak the ultimate bearing capacity for this type of curve is obtained by the intersection of the tangents so you will draw one tangent from the origin and second tangent from the end part of the curve wherever these two tangent intersect from that a point you will draw a vertical line which will intersect the horizontal axis at some point and this point will be your ultimate bearing capacity of the test plate so in this case the ultimate bearing capacity of a test plate is 240 kilo pascal this is the ultimate bearing capacity of the test plate now we have to find the ultimate bearing capacity of the foundation and for that we need to find the bearing capacity factor and the angle of internal uh, friction so first we will use the ultimate bearing capacity uh, for this test plate using the Terzaghi's ultimate bearing capacity equation. So ultimate uh, bearing capacity by Terzaghi's method is given as QU is equal to 1.3 C dash NC plus Q into NQ plus 0 0.4 into gamma into B into N gamma. Okay. Where this uh, Q ultimate that is ultimate bearing capacity of the test plate. Uh, we just found out it from the load settlement curve as 240 kilopascal. Okay, C dash is zero because we are performing the test on a sandy soil. Okay, so first term in this equation becomes zero. Surcharge on the test plate is also zero, so Q will be zero. And the unit weight of soil is 19.61 kilonewton per meter cube. Weight of the test plate okay which is a square plate this is 0 0.6 meter or 60 centimeter so putting values in the equation we get as 240 is equal to 0 0.4 into 19.61 into 0 0.6 into n gamma solving for n gamma okay so our value of n gamma uh, will be 51 after getting the bearing capacity factor n gamma is 51 we have to find the angle of internal friction and another bearing capacity factor that is NQ. So for this we will use the chart given by Peck, Hansen and Thornburn uh, for the Terzaghi's bearing capacity factors. Okay. So for N gamma is equal to 51 which is here. 
from this point you will draw a horizontal line this will cut this n gamma curve at some point from that point you will draw a vertical line which will give you angle of internal friction for this n gamma uh, for this n gamma bearing capacity factor which in this case is 37 degrees so angle of internal friction for this soil is 37 degree and similarly uh, for this angle of internal friction which is 37 degree value of n cube bearing capacity factor from this uh, that from this chart is 43 so n cube for this soil okay that is for angle of internal friction of 37 degree this is 43 after getting the value of n gamma and n cube now you can find the ultimate bearing capacity of the foundation using again the terzaghi's bearing capacity equation so QU this will be equal to since this is a sandy soil so first term in the Terzaghi's bearing capacity equation will be 0 gamma this is 19.61 depth of foundation we are uh, uh, constructing the foundation at a depth of 2 meter below the ground surface so df is 2 and Q this is 43 okay so B that is the width of the foundation this is 2 meter okay and n gamma this is 51 so this gives me the ultimate bearing capacity for the foundation as 2486 kilopascal now the net ultimate bearing capacity of the foundation this is given as ultimate bearing capacity minus the surcharge which is gamma into df so this will be 2486 minus 19.61 into 2 which is 244 6 kilopascal net say bearing capacity of the foundation this will be net ultimate bearing capacity divided by factor of safety so it will be 2446 divided by 3 3 is the factor of safety for our foundation which will be 815 kilopascal will be the net say bearing capacity of the foundation so this net say bearing capacity is from the shear failure criterion now we will find the net allowable bearing pressure using the settlement criterion in the question i have been given that the allowable settlement of my foundation this is 22 mm from this you will found the uh, settlement of the test plate so settlement of the plate this is given as sp is equal to sf into bp into bf plus 0.3 divided by bp into divided by bf into bp plus 0.3 whole square bp is the width of the test plate which is 60 centimeter or 0.6 meter and bf is the width of the foundation which is 2 meter putting values in the equation we get the value of the settlement of the test plate as 12.93 mm okay so after this uh, our settlement of the test plate this is 12.93 mm so again from the load settlement curve we found out that the ultimate bearing capacity of the test plate is 240 kilopascal and settlement of the test plate for the allowable settlement of foundation of 20 mm is 12.93 mm we can see this settlement this gets plotted in the failure range okay because the failure range for the test plate you can see this point is the failure and below this point this is the failure range of the test plate okay so our settlement this gets plotted in the failure uh, range of the load settlement curve so if the settlement of the plate it gets plotted in the failure range of the load settlement curve so it is not sound to take the safe bearing pressure corresponding to this point that is we cannot draw a horizontal line from this point and it will cut the uh, this load settlement curve at some point and from that point we can draw a, a vertical line and which will give us the this allowable say bearing pressure for the test plate so this procedure will be wrong so if the settlement of the plate it gets plotted in the failure range of the load settlement curve we have to follow the method given by Rao and Ramaswamy which states that the say bearing pressure in such a case should be read out on a line joining the origin and the point corresponding to 50 percent of the ultimate bearing capacity of the test plate okay so say bearing pressure in this case we have to find by drawing a line 
which joins the origin and the point corresponding to 50% of the ultimate bearing capacity of the test plate. We can see this line, this is joining the origin, okay, the tangent, and also it is approximately joining the 50% of the ultimate bearing capacity of the test plate. So our bearing capacity of the test plate is 240 kilopascal. So 50% of that will be approximately 120 kilopascal. So this line is joining the horiz, horiz, uh, sorry, the origin and the 50% of the ultimate bearing capacity of the test plate. So from the settlement of the test plate, okay, which is 12.93 mm we have to draw a horizontal line and this horizontal line will cut this line which joins the origin and the 50 percent of the ultimate bearing capacity of the test plate at some point from that point we have to draw a vertical line and this will give us the allowable bearing pressure uh, for the test plate which is 329 kilo pascal okay so this is the allowable bearing pressure of the test plate or the foundation okay according to the allowable settlement criterion so net say bearing pressure from the settlement criterion is 329 kilopascal so from shear failure criterion we get the net say bearing capacity as 953 kilopascal and from the settlement criterion we get the net say bearing pressure as 329 kilopascal we have to take the lower or the two values so settlement criterion governs the design and the net allowable bearing pressure for our foundation this will be 329 kilopascal okay so after finding the net allowable bearing pressure you can find the allowable load by multiplying the net allowable bearing pressure by the square of the width so it will be 329 into 2 square which is 1316 kilonewton so this is the allowable load on our foundation or footing okay which we just find out by uh, taking the lower value of the shear failure criterion and the settlement criterion so this is how you can find the allowable load on foundation using the data from the plate load test i hope this solution video was clear to you and you definitely learn something new from this video okay if you have some doubts or some confusion you can write that in the comment box and i will be happy to answer that okay and if you found this video helpful please subscribe to my channel and share this video thanks for watching and stay tuned